Um, I want to tell you um, about a very challenging thing that I've been trying to do on Mondays. On Mondays, you know, I, I am just floored by the quality of discussion in these Tao De Jin meetups. We are doing a good job of getting a piece of the East and trying to build our sensibilities. It's a very delicate thing to build a sensibility. And that's what we are doing slowly, step by step, week after week, reading after reading, thinking after, you know, thinking in our own ways, writing, all of that we are doing. And what I wanted to do is I also wanted to put West side by side because I don't want to lose the West. West has its strengths. West has, West has its weaknesses, but West has its strengths. Don't want to lose that. So I've been trying to do this on Monday. So Monday was to encapsulate the West. Now that's much harder problem because we are more familiar with the West. You know, I started with Nietzsche as a good example, as one of the you know, great thinkers in the West, but there is a lot more to West than Nietzsche. And I think I have found something which actually meet, meets the bill, okay? Now, Charlie captured it best. I think a couple of meetups ago, I don't know which meetup it was, but he said that the West is Yang. It is extroverted, focused on the outer. It is, it uses language, explicit thinking, and it tries to transform and dominate the world, it tries to transform the world. As opposed to that, East is Yin. It is more introverted. It is more intuitive as opposed to explicit and it tries to accept nature so if i want to pick something that epitomizes the west it has to have those qualities essentially of transforming the world transforming things but we are not really talking about West for West own sake. What we are trying to do is that we are trying to connect the West and the East. We want the part of the West that builds on the strengths of the West, its ability to be more explicit. You know, we've got science and technology as a result of that. That has transformed our worlds. So we are able to do this because of, we are able to talk to each other because of that. We have incredible amount of prosperity, incredible, incredibly long lives. All of us otherwise would be dead uh, by now. Um, so there is tremendous value that is created by the West. At the same time, there are values from the East. If integrated fully with the West, will produce something even more magnificent. The biggest thinker I have seen on this, who has actually done, does this, which combines the intuitive with the explicit reason, with emotion, individual with community, is Louis Sullivan. But his presentation is actually a very Eastern presentation. It is very much intuitive, flowery, metaphoric kind of presentation. But I found another thinker, thanks to CJ from Thinking Society. And that is, there is a book called The Design Way by Harold Nelson, which does a spectacular job of showing what design is, how it needs to speak to your soul. He, he talks about ensouled design, okay? That is equivalent of Louis Sullivan saying, form follows function. It is very explicit. It, he lays out all the issues far better than I have seen anybody do. 
Besides, it it actually speaks to me very well. This is I have I am almost eighty percent of the book done in the last three days. Okay, I've never read a book that complex this fast. Okay, so it is because it is using many of the ideas that we've been discussing between yin and yang. That how it how the design needs to be like that between this marriage between intuition and reason. He talks about the flow state all the time that we've been talking about. He talks about this order and chaos. So it's very much connected with all, you know, whether we're looking at the Jordan Peterson ideas or Louis Sullivan ideas or Tao Te Ching ideas, it's all connected. It, it brings all of that in and it is, it is something spectacular. So I'm going to start, I'm going to use that as a representative of the West and I'm going to do this on Mondays. Now, the great thing is that I actually found out about this because I interviewed CJ and he, in a short interview of about one and a half hours, he held up the book four times. And I said, wait a minute, I thought, you know, CJ and Buckminster Fuller. Buckminster Fuller was the base of his thought, but looks like this book is influential. Let me look and see what it is. Um, so that's one thing. Second thing is CJ has done more than 20, 25 meetups on this book for the Thinking Society. So we can leverage a lot of that. Further, Harold Nelson is just simply brilliant. Um, I found a 30 minute video where he explains the concept of design. It's a very profound concept. If you just get this concept, after all, if you do listen to, you know, if you participate in 10 meetups and get just this concept of design, that will be well worth it. Because what design is, is taking in everything that you know from your senses and memory, organizing it with your conceptual faculty, keeping in mind your spirit your purpose, projecting the future and building something, planning something, building something that makes your future actually better and do this on a massive scale. And that's what human beings do. So I, I'm calling it, I'm titling the meetups, you are a, you are a designing animal. I think rational animal is, doesn't do justice to man because it focuses on one aspect of man and doesn't even look at the consequences of it. Doesn't designing animal, I think captures human being. And that goes to everything we are learning from Ascent of Man by Jacob Bronowski about the role of the hand, role of planning. It all, all of that is integrated. So many, most of our meetups will get integrated. Um, you know, by, by this. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm inviting anybody who wants, uh, Maritza and Joe have already agreed to participate actively. Uh, and I want to extend this invitation to anybody who has, especially the folks from the Thinking Society who have, you know, participated and watched uh, CJ's meetups on this uh, to join us in exploring uh, this book. We're going to start slow. Next meetup is going to be overview. So all you need to do, I actually, I did a 13 minute video summarizing what I'm trying to do with these meetups. I'll also take this section and present it there so people understand what we are trying to do. Because what I want to do is I want to design our way of exploring design. Okay, I want to see how much can be accomplished because there are some really great people here. How do you leverage the creativity of people? You know, Joe is familiar with everything CJ has said. So he's going to be able to pull everything. Marissa has been studying Louis Sullivan. She's going to be able to make connections between Louis Sullivan and, um, and the design way. There are other people who will have their own take. So I'm inviting people to come up with their own take on this, and we will figure out a way of working together as co-panelists, as participants, 
and really mastering this idea of design uh, together. Um, so it's going to be a project. It's not going to be meetups. It's basically a, this, these meetups are going to be this design project. Uh, I'm trying to look for a name. And again, I'm uh, you know, open to suggestions. Um, and let's do this. So um, I want to invite anybody, if you have any thoughts, um, I don't know if Maritza or, um, or Joe want to say anything brief uh, about, about the design way or anybody else wants to say anything about this. Go ahead and type exclamation mark. Joe, go ahead. So it's interesting because um, in what I've read about design up till this point, I mean, I think Louis Sullivan does bring in metaphysics as well, but this is a book that's very explicit about bringing in metaphysics in a way that is like into the design process. So that's something a little bit more unique. Uh, so I think things like, and I'll be interested to see how form follows function actually fits in with the design way. I think there's going to be a lot of crossover there. Can I, can uh, I give you a short answer? Oh yeah, please. That's actually, um, I was trying to, yeah. Okay. So, so basically what, what Louis Sullivan does is that he's gra grasping the same thing in a poetic way, in a metaphorical way. He's capturing very deep issues, often much deeper than what Harold Nelson is doing, but he's doing it in a, in a way in which Lao Tzu does. He says, be like water. Now, be like water is a metaphysical statement. It is a very deep statement, but it is metaphorical. It is suggestive. It is very deeply suggestive. That's how Louis Sullivan is, as opposed to somebody like Harold Nelson, he's trying to do the same thing his explicitness is much, much higher than Louis Sullivan. But the grandeur of what Louis Sullivan is doing is larger. But both of them are trying to do the about the same thing. So it's a very good juxtaposition. And because I have kind of spent years on Louis Sullivan, I'm, I'm going to be able to do I'm going to build, I'm going to be able to bring some of that, but I'm trying to understand him on his own terms. But ultimately what we are all trying to do is not really trying to study Louis Sullivan or Harold Nelson. We are trying to form our own conception of what does it mean to design? What does it mean for us? What designs do we live in? You know, he gives this great example of fish talking about water so uh, that's, that's one of my favorites, you know, like two fish are saying, what is this thing called water? Because if you're living in water, you don't notice it. We live in designs. We live in culture. It's all around us. Words we are using is part of cultures. The way we are moving is picked up from the culture. A lot of it, a lot of it is culture. Um, it makes you aware of it. It makes you self-conscious about it. And we can take it to a new level. So uh, it's going to be uh, Brian followed by Maritza. Brian. Uh, I'll just, uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. I'll just throw out there, uh, when I was teaching, one of the things I looked at was the Stanford School of Design, the Stanford D School model. It's very similar to what you all are talking about. Here's the purpose, the, the mission statement of the Stanford D School. Uh, the Stanford D School is a place where people use design to develop their own creative potential. So I don't know how much that ties in with what you're thinking, Shrikant, but. Um, uh, Brian, I'm going to invite you to come and participate and talk about the Stanford model and compare that approach to approach of Harold Nelson, that would be a great, great way of, because you know, we're looking at the idea of design and we'll take all the ideas. We'll use this Harold Nelson as a core and I'm happy to bring in 
things like that. So especially because you have taught it, you, you, you know it very well, please, you know, participate actively and let's see what we can do. Um, Marisa. So uh, to me, I'm, I'm really excited about looking at the connection of um, the design way with um, uh, Louis Sullivan. So the, um, what I view it as design here by um, Nelson is introduced to us as a kind of an organic way of viewing systems um, based thinking, right? So, so like design is an intentional change that we're looking to use. And it's like for the purpose of creating and it lies kind of at the basic, like it's a foundational approach. And um, what Nelson points out is that we don't even realize that, that it's there, like we don't even see it. So, you know, as Shikant was talking about, you know, the fish wondering what the heck is water because it's all around you and it's everywhere. And you, you cannot take a breath almost without some aspect of design shaping your next moment. And what Nelson is saying, well, when, why are we allowing it to just happen? Let's kind of plot to shape it. And what I like about that, and the reason I use the word organic is it's this thing that we have been looking at with this community, with you, Srikant, with so many of you here today, Many of you have heard me say before, you know, let's find that meaningful path. Let's walk with purpose to find our meaning. And this here is telling us, I have a blueprint where we're gonna find this, this path. And so that's really enticing. So I, I will say that I have um, been aware of, you know, in CJ's, um, ideas on the design way. And I have never before purchased the book. So um, you have Srikant Sh to thank for that. I have in the past relied on CJ's notes and uh, CJ's website plus one or two others on, and you know, videos to uh, learn a little bit about the design way. But now I'm looking forward to delving into the book with the rest of you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, next up is going to be Mike, Charlie, and Joe. Mike. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the work at all, but I, um, I have a brother who's been in manufacturing and designing things for uh, about five decades. And um, I could learn a lot from him in terms of how things were designed and produced in the 50s and 60s, so much by hand. And then as we've gotten into modern times, how computers have changed so much of the design process. I don't know if that contribution would fit in what... The it, book would be, is it would be fantastic because what, what happens is that um, the big point that uh, Harold Nelson is making about design is that design is an embodied activity. There is, it, you know, the skill of design is, you, you cannot just do it. I suppose it's, it's like being, he says, it's like being a connoisseur. Can't be a connoisseur of wine without actually tasting the wine. <laughs> it is the, in the process of doing, perfecting this entire loop, going back to kind of conceptualizing it, doing it, seeing the feedback of it, that design is done. So it is really very close to, it, it is about understanding what is behind this great artisanal process on one hand, Secondly, it takes one step higher of saying that it's not enough just to produce this one great thing. What you have to understand what kind of things you have to do in order to do that again and again and again, not only with this particular thing, but with every aspect of your life. So it is taking that in, you know, it is looking at design in this very profound way. And then it will also be able to ask question, what of this can be done by a computer and what of it cannot be done by a computer? 
there is there are limits to that because design involves all of our faculties it involves our intuition it involves our senses it involves our reason and it is he, he says it's the dance between the real the true and the ideal most people when they think about mechanical things today's culture they just look at true or effective they don't look at what is real what is actually there and they don't look at the ideal and without those parameters you cannot design a future because you have to answer the question where do you want to go where do you need to go where do you want to go where is and another point deep point he makes is that of service that it's not just a person's feeling about i feel this design is actually done externally most of the design is externally and the consumers people who are using the design the stakeholders are other people so it has to be objectively good so how do you build all of these goodnesses excellences not only all levels of that speak to all levels of your being but also speak to community and how we can work together and build each other's designs up as a result so absolutely it's it's something it it is truly stunning mike and uh i i think i think you're going to love it wonderful uh next up is charlie followed by joe charlie yeah uh, this uh, brings up to my mind a, a metaphor that i uh, love to use almost compulsively uh and that's uh, uh jazz musicians and uh, because they kind of capture this whole thing, because in, in the process of, of creating something, of, it's it's like a a, a real time design. Uh, and, and but there's there's uh, for one of the things that I heard many people say is 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 uh, half of, half of winning is showing up. Okay, and 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 so you have to engage. Okay, you have to you have to be there and do it. Okay, and uh, and, and and so in, in in the process, you 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 gain chops. Like like Aman was saying about that person who worked in the mental hospital. You know, he knew to walk slow, and uh, and and so it's this this whole idea of living life artfully is um, you know it, it's you know engagement, full engagement, realizing that there are skills that are worth acquiring. And uh, this is the part I'm working on myself right now, and uh, and and, uh, uh, and then having this uh, the, the imagination and the intuition to 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 know where to take that urge. You know, one of my favorite quotes is from John Keats: "That uh, truth is beauty, and beauty is truth." And uh, and 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 so to me, that's a big hint. Okay, about where where to go, and uh, and, and and so um, uh, to me, it's just uh, life living is an art form, and. Uh, in, in the, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of like, you know, in the Christian Bible, they say, by your works, you, uh, you, you will be known, you know, so that, that, that uh, you know, how, how you live your life is important, and, and, uh, and the living well is, is, is like, you know, creating beauty, you know, not just for yourself, but, you know, a, a, to help bring about a, a community of, of, of uh, that, that is able to participate in that, that uh, creation process. Beautiful, uh, beautifully put. I would add one thing to it. You know, when I studied the great ideas, uh, there are three concepts that always go together, truth, beauty, and goodness. Uh, and those are intimately tied and they build on one another. And that's, see, th this is what is unique about this book. Harold Nelson actually deals with those issues as central design principles that you can't, really have a good design without it being real without it being true and without it being ideal you need to have all of that and if you have all of that you produce the beauty that that and then you then you experience it as as beauty because he used this uses this concept of ensouled design that means it has soul it has it is actually it's a it's the the creator who actually made that has put his soul in there he has responded and evaluated every aspect of it to make it 
tied to reality, very real, true, not contradictory with contrary with anything, ideal. And it speaks not only to them, but because he has done it out there in the open, in an honest way, it also speaks to the other. And what that does is that it actually adds to the energy of others at every level. Um, you know, Louis Sullivan is very big in that, uh, of saying that a place not only has to be functional, it doesn't only, it's not enough for something to be efficient. It should make you feel as it should make you feel. Of any particular room, if you're trying to design it, it's not just that it is effective in doing, but you should feel a certain way in that room. That is very real. Uh, how so? The, and all of that is is built in. Steve, you had a point. Uh, it was just a question. Um, does he acknowledge any debt to, to Plato with the truth, beauty, goodness, or uh, the truth, beauty, goodness? I'm talking about a much more kind of a general principle that I'm uh, saying. Because that still is basically platonic too, right? I mean, uh, there are versions of there is a version of it which is platonic and there is a version of it which is aristotelian or aquinas um okay. the uh, so let me try to answer this okay let, let me try to answer it. it's it's a very beautiful question let me try to answer it um the this is very uh, i i or let me see how to put it okay this is a very deep issue okay this is the, it goes to the heart of a key point key difference key battle of ideas across the Western civilization. People think of it as Aristotle versus Plato. The Aristotelian approach basically loves the world, starts with the world, tries to induce things from it, and uses whatever is induced in order to shape ideas, then form evaluations, and do action. And it remains open to the results of the action. So there is this continuous loop going on. Right. It worships the world. It says, I am trying to live in this world and everything else I'm doing, like the ideas I'm forming are based, um, are in service of that. So there is this loop going on between the person uh, there is a meetup that we did on the cogitative sense of Thomas Aquinas, who captures this point most brilliantly. So if you go to the YouTube 52 Living Ideas, search for Aquinas, that's the, that's the basic idea. Now the truth, beauty, and goodness over here. So, and the thing that is missing, I would add real. So you, you are trying to be open to nature and what nature is, that is critical part of it. So it's very much Taoist, this approach of taking nature as given, but it adds to it of saying that names, I am going to try to name because name is the father of 10,000 things. I want to make 10,000 things in order to make life better. But I know that these are names and I know that these are things. This is not the Tao. So I will remain open to corrective mechanisms uh, to continuously keep uh, improving it. That is the Aristotelian approach. Platonic approach is different from that. It privileges the, it sets up this dichotomy between the world, which it it's considers not particularly important and it privileges the ideas that are there. So I don't want to go deep into this discussion, but all I will say here is that Harold Nelson, Louis Sullivan, um, Akoff, Buckminster Fuller are all Aristotelian in this sense of the word. They love this world, they love life, they want to make it better, and they use ideas as tools in this loop in order to make it better, which is very different from the Platonic tradition. So that's a short answer to that. Um, don't, don't worry, I'm not. I'm not that. 
I no no I don't want to I don't want to distract it from the to, I was just trying to draw a, a connection that is is all it was. It's, Absolutely no, I understand, Steve. Yeah. But I wanted to make it clear, not for your sake, but for sake of other people. Uh, but I do not want to get distracted by the uh, the 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 per from the purpose. The purpose I'm, I'm, I'm what I'm saying is, this is the book that I think has done a spectacular job of bringing all of these things together. And that would be a worthy way of worthy meetup for, to put side by side without the shame. And so I'm going to do this on Mondays, um, starting the coming Monday. Um, I'm going to, um, you know, there is a 30 minute video. So firstly, I encourage you to go ahead and acquire the book and start reading it. Um, there are, I'm going to try to give like a book. I'm, I'm, I'm about 80% of the way through the book. I'm going to finish it in the next couple of days. I'm going to discuss it with a whole bunch of people. I'll keep on updating the web page, uh, the, uh, the, the meetup page. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to invite everybody to contribute as much as possible. I do not know often. I've designed only two meetups so far on this. The first one is going to be just that 30 minute video and the concept of design. That's all we are going to focus on. What is, what is design? And why is man a designing animal? In, and what is the role of design in life? That is all we're going to be looking at. Because if we get that, we have a good thing. Next, I'm taking help of Maritza, who knows, who's been working on this for some time. Uh, we are going to come up with a constellation of key concepts in the book. So what I'm doing is that, okay, I, I have to tell you this. I asked CJ's advice and he says, it's very easy. You just need to do 200 meetups to make this happen. I don't want to do 200 meetups. I don't want to, I don't want to wait that long, okay? I always believe in the spiral loop of doing things at certain levels and then kind of trying to map out the whole thing and delivering values at every stage. So it's a far more, so that's the kind of process I have. So I'm gonna start with concept of design, then I'm gonna identify, we're gonna, I'm, and I'm again, inviting everybody to contribute to that. So the key question for the second meetup is going to be, what are the key ideas of Harold Nelson in the design way? If you had to just identify ideas, and we're just going to discuss those ideas. I'm hoping to get it down to maybe about somewhere between 10, not more than 20, probably somewhere between six to 12 ideas is what I'm hoping to get it down to. It doesn't have to cover the book uh, comprehensively, but it has to cover the entire skeleton, entire core of the book. Um, and then we are going to just understand those ideas. That's, that'll be the second meetup. And then soon we will actually go into the, the the book, perhaps chapter by chapter. So I'm looking forward to you know what, uh, what how, and I, I, will, I will keep talking to, to talking to folks to figure out how to do that. But that's the plan, folks. All right. Thank you so much, and uh, it's always an honor to have so many so many people, so many great people here. Uh, and I will I will see you folks soon. Bye. Good night. Good night.